We're going to learn about another very important class in PyQGIS, which is the QGS project class. We learned about the first class, the QGS interface class, which is your QGIS application, which is used to control and add stuff to the toolbar menus and even you know, add vector layers, etc. When you start QGS, everything that you do in the context of QGS, adding layers, styling it, saving stuff, all of that happens in the context of a project. So when I start QGIS right now, it's a blank canvas. I have a blank project open in QGIS. You can see there's an untitled project. So whenever QGIS starts by default, it says I'm doing everything and that is called a project. And this is an empty project that is loaded there. If I load a project, so I loaded a pre-saved project called sf.qgz. When I load this, it removes the previous untitled project and loads sf project. I have another project called places. If I load this, it removes the SF project and loads the places project. In QGIS, the way QGIS is structured, you can have only one project active at a time. You cannot have multiple projects because everything you do is in the context of a project. So if you want to now change some project settings, you want to change the project CRS, you want to load different projects, modify the current project, all of that can be controlled by the QGIS project class. Let's look at the documentation for that. We learned that there can always be only one project active. That means there can always be only one instance of this class active in QGIS. And if you open another project, the previous instance get deleted and QGIS creates a new instance of this class and you get a reference to that. This kind of class is known as a singleton class. That means the system will enforce that there's only one instance of this class that is available to you at any given moment. If you want to run any functions from this particular class, we need an object reference. So how do we get an object reference to the QGIS project class? Well, the documentation says you need to use this method. QGIS project dot instance, you run this, this will give you an object, which is your current project. And then you can do stuff from that. And again, when you load a new project, this instance will give you the reference to the new project. Let's try out, we'll learn how to use this class and we can use this read method to read a pre-configured project. In your data package, we have a few projects. The QGIS projects are saved with the QGZ extension. Let's say I want to open this sf.qgz project. A project is a collection of layers. It can contain styles, labels, and a bunch of other things that are packaged into that. So we're going to want to read this project file and load this into QGS. Let's copy this snippet. Here we first find the define the path to the project. So we'll we print this project path that we've created. And you can see this is the path to that QGZ file in my data folder. I want to load it in my current project. So I obtained the reference to the QGIS project class, which is QGIS project.instance. And this project is now my instance of the QGIS project class, which I can run the methods on. We'll run this method called project.read. So QGIS project.read will just read a particular file and load it. Let's run this. And you can see it loaded that particular project. Try out the snippet from section 6.2.1. This is going to load this sf.qgz project into your QGIS. Reading this kind of project is useful because all your QGIS work will be saved inside of a project. One very useful customization that I want to teach you is being able to load different projects from a selector. Let's say you are building an internal directory where you have all the different projects saved inside of a database or in some shared file system. And you want your user to be able to discover that and load those projects for their work. So you can build a directory and say, I have a list of projects, you can have a nice you know, layout and say, pick this project, and it's gonna go and find the path and load that into QGIS. So let's see how to do something like that. Let's do the, the next code snippet. Here, what I wanna do is I want to add a new toolbar to my QGIS. I'm gonna call this a project selector and it'll say, have a label, select project load. It'll have two values. You want to load sf.qgz or you want to load places.qgz. As the user selects one, it's going to go and load the project from the data package and display that. And this is an example that shows you if you have a pre-configured path where you want to load the projects from, you can build a user interface that allows your users to go and 
pick those. Let's see how we can code something like this. We'll do an empty project. So we'll say, what do I add a toolbar? The QGIS interface class iFace provides a method add toolbar, which will create a new toolbar and add it to the main QGIS toolbar area. We're going to name our toolbar as project selector, and this is the object for that. We want to add a label. So we are using the QLabel class to define the name of the label. All QT objects can optionally have a parent. So a parent child relationship is useful because if you delete this project toolbar, it's also going to delete the label because it's part of that. So if you are having a hierarchy of objects, it's helpful for QT to decide what objects belong to what class. So we'll say, have a label, the parent is the project toolbar. I also want to have a Q combo box. Q combo box is this drop down menu that QT provides, which will be having different items that you can add. And this is also part of the toolbar. And let's see what this looks like. So, I have my project toolbar. I want to add the label and I want to add the widget to it. Let's run this code and see what it looks like. So you can see right now, I have created this new toolbar here, which has got this one label, select the project load and an empty dropdown box. So this is your Q combo box that we have created. And this toolbar shows up here. Let's add some items to this combo box. You can say dot add item sf.qgz. I want this to be one of the text item that is displayed. I also want to do the places. So I want to add two of these. You can see now I have populated this combo box with these two options here. And what I want to do is I want to configure the behavior where user selects this. It's going to trigger a function which will go and find the path to this and load it into QGIS. How do I know what signal to connect my function to? So first I need to figure out what signal this object emits when I change the selection. So let's go to the Q combo box class. This is the QT widget for creating a dropdown. To come here, there are signals. So these are the different signals that this emits. The signal that we can connect to is this one, current text changed. So if you select the change the text, it's going to emit a signal saying that this is the current text. So this thing is emitted whenever the current text changes. The new value is passed as text. This is now a signal which just doesn't say that it's it has been changed. It also says what has been changed. So now when you connect a function, that function can take input and say, this signal sent me the information that this is the newly selected text and you can do something with it. So let's say we want to take our project selector dot current text change. So this is the signal that gets emitted when you change the combo box and we can connect a function to it. Let's define a function name as load project. So let's define a function load project. And as I mentioned, this signal will tell you what was the newly selected text. So that will be the input that will be sent to this. We'll just name in variable as project name. So now we can say, we know when the user changes the selection, we know what the user selected. So let's just see if we can get that. Let's run this. And if I test it, you can see you selected places.qgz. If I change this, you selected sf.qgz. So now I'm able to get the text and the rest is now simple. We can just define the path to this and call project.read to this. So now we can define a path. This is the path to the project. We want to get a reference to the current project instance. So we'll say QGIS project instance, and we can say project.read project path. Let's run this. So now we have this dropdown. If I change the selection, oops, what happened? So there is some error. I have this here. Let's try. So let's run this and see if it works. So now I select places, it's going to load the places project. If I load this, it's going to load the, the SF project. And again, this is quite helpful for 
you to set up, you can have this pre-configure projects that users can simply pick from a drop-down list. This example also shows how you can code different UI elements like drop-down and label and add them as a toolbar. So if your plugin needs a toolbar, this is the way to code it up. Try out this code snippet from 6.2.2, copy paste and see if you are able to run this and load the different projects. The QGIS project class can read projects. It can control the project properties. Also, it has got this, an interesting function, add map layer and add map layers. So add map layer adds some layer to the map. We already saw that the iFace can also add layers. Why we have two different functions? Well, this allows you to add a QGIS map layer object. Many times you are creating some layers, you run some code, we'll create a QGIS layer. And now say, so I want to see the layer. I don't, it's not in the path, it's in the RAM, it's in the memory. How do I add a memory layer? Or I've created a layer, I don't know what the path is, but I have a layer reference. If I have a layer object, you can use this add map layer function to add that to the map. And the QGIS map layer object knows the name of the layer, so you don't have to specify it. It is part of this object and you'll set the name to be whatever it is there. So let's see how to use this. This is often useful when you're running some processing tools which generates temporary layers. If you add, want to add a temporary layer or you created a temporary layer and you want to add it to the QGIS, this is the only method that can do this. iFace doesn't have any way to add something that doesn't exist on disk. So this also is a very useful thing that the QGIS project class provides. In your next section, 6.2.3, learn how to create a new vector layer. And this has got some additional code that will help you work through the API. This is a code where you are now using this function iFace.mapCanvas. If you see your QGIS application, your QGIS application has the toolbar area on top, the lay panels on the left, the Python console is here. Whatever is in the middle, that is called the QGIS map canvas. If you want to do something with this map canvas, you can obtain the reference to the QGIS map canvas object using iFace.mapCanvas. So here we get the map canvas and we say what is the current extent of map canvas so that is mc.extent which will tell you what is the current extent so this will give you if i'm zoomed in say this is my extent of the map canvas I'm zoomed out this is a map canvas i want to show you how i can create a polygon representing the current map canvas extent and add it to the map here is some code do not worry too much about it this has been copied from the pyqgs cookbook it says this is how you create a new empty layer and set some geometry. The main thing is we have the extent. We say, I want to create a geometry, a QGIS geometry object from that extent, which is a polygon and create a feature from it. So we now have this V layer object, which is my temporary layer, which I've created, which is the current extent of my map canvas. I want to add it to the map canvas. So you, we know that the QGIS project class has the method called add map layer. And I can use that to do this. And I need to run this on the current instance of the QGIS project, which I can obtain by QGIS project dot instance add map layer. Let's run this. So I'm zoomed in. This is my current map canvas extent. I run this, I get a polygon for that extent. If I run it again, I get a polygon for that extent. This code is helpful. Many times you will want to know what is the current extent where the user is zoomed into. And you can use that to you know, obtain the, whatever is the area and the coordinates of the corners, you can do some operations using that. So the map canvas dot extent is the function to obtain that. Also, when you have a temporary layer and you want to add it to QGIS, QGIS project class provides you with this method, which can add a temporary layer to QGIS. Try out this code, 6.2.2, 6.2.3, and you can zoom in and out and run this. It'll create a polygon representing the current extent of the canvas.